Yo, what is going on YouTube Sharp here, Bernie has another video, and today we are going to be talking about collecting Pop Funkos. Before we get into this video, I want to say we are close to 10,000 subscribers. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet, and also click the like button. It helps the channel out. I do appreciate it. Let's get right into it. I had an interesting suggestion on my stream last night. One of my viewers, Ninja Killer, said I should do a video talking about how I got into collecting Pop Funkos and tips that I can give you guys that I've learned from collecting Pop Funkos. I have some stuff written down, so I stay on topic because I am known to ramble a little bit. So if I get off on a tangent, I apologize. My number one thing is, is why I started. Why did I start collecting these things, these Pop Funkos? It all started when I had Linda watch all the Star Wars movies from you know the very first one, episode four, all the way until The Last Jedi. In December, we went to go see The Rise of Skywalker in theaters, and at the theater, they had a BB-8 Pop Funko displayed right as soon as you walked into the doors, and Linda immediately saw it, and she loves BB-8. She loves the droids. She's like, oh, we should get this. And in my mind, I'm thinking, AMC's charging me $10 for a candy bar. I'm not even gonna know what they're charging for BB-8. So we're gonna put BB-8 back. I said, let's check Amazon. We'll figure it out from there. Let's check Amazon. So that is exactly what happened. We went back when we got home, uh, Linda got on Amazon and our first Pop Funko was purchased BB-8. I mentioned in another video, the first Pop Funkos I ever bought were Bob Ross and Donkey, but I don't really count those because I just bought those because I saw them on Twitter and I thought they were funny. Like I like Bob Ross and I like Donkey. So I was like, oh, let's get them. That was years ago. This. I think the, the collecting started in December. Uh, and so it started out with BB-8 and then from BB-8 it went on to, we got to get R2-D2. If you have R2-D2, you got to have the duo C-3PO. And now you kind of get like where things are heading of getting characters. And we, you know, if you get Leia, you got to get Han, which we actually don't have Han. I'm holding off. Uh, because the blue box Han Solo is vaulted and that is one of the more rare ones. I believe he's a, a couple hundred dollars. Same with Greedo. That's one of the few original Star Wars pops that we don't have. That's where it all started. Linda actually got me into it because, you know, she wanted to start, she wanted to start getting these characters and then it started into, to collecting them. And I don't think we really got into it, into it, like collecting until we went to the mall and we went into a store that had a bunch of pop Funkos. And yeah, there we got Darth Vader, Boba Fett. Like we got a bunch of characters. Um, and I'll get into that later, but yeah, that's that's kind of where it all started. I have a lot of the Star Wars ones and now I'm kind of venturing off into Rick and Morty and, and the flocked ones. Throughout all of that, I have learned a lot of lessons that I think I can teach you guys if you guys are wanting to get into it because uh, I think there's a lot of stuff to learn when it comes to collecting this stuff. Where do you start? Well, first things first, you got to pick something that you like. You got to find something that you find enjoyable, uh, whether it be, I mean, the, the beautiful thing about Pops is there is something for everyone. I've learned that from these mystery boxes. If you like Disney, they got Disney. If you like Star Wars, they got Star Wars. If you like Star Trek, I think they have Star Trek. Um, just about everything. They have rock bands, pop icons, video games, uh, movies, TV shows, literally just about anything they make pops of it and so you're able to collect them and you just got to pick one thing because if you try to do multiple of them at once you know you get into this like you look at the back of this box and you're like all right so we got r2d2 we got wicket we got jar jar binks we don't have admiral akbar we don't have queen amidala we don't have lando we got to get admiral akbar queen amidala and lando like come on what are we doing that's what it turns into. If you're doing that with three other collections at once, uh, it's going to be tough and you're going to stress yourself out. I, I would recommend sticking to one thing that you like and then do, do what we did. We stuck to Star Wars for a couple months. We collected a bunch of them. I don't go on eBay or anything and buy any of the vaulted Star Wars ones anymore. I mean, the only ones I'm trying to add to my collection now are, are the more valuable Star Wars ones, the, the rarer ones. But we definitely did go on eBay and buy a lot of commons for, for $2 winning bids. I think I want to bid the lowest was like a dollar. We got a lot of commons through doing that, but there are a lot of pops. So I recommend sticking to one thing and, and then just maybe later on switching. Uh, my number two thing is what I said with eBay, compare prices. So when I mentioned that we went to the mall, we went to the toy store and there was a bunch of pop Funkos. Uh, we, you know, we bought a lot of them there cause we were newbies and we didn't really, you know, 
fully understand collecting Pop Funkos and the values, the values of, of the sticker, and whether it's a shared exclusive sticker, whether it's a con sticker, since all these characters are made up, you know, it's not like having a Michael Jordan where it's, it's a Michael Jordan rookie card that you have that's rare because it was his rookie season and he's the best basketball player to ever live. Uh, these are made up characters. So the only way that just like Pokemon or something that they can make them more rare is to just make them different, to make them more exclusive. So you might get a shiny or a first edition or something like that. So the stickers are Pop Funko's way of doing a holographic card or a more exclusive one. So this I picked up at Target, if you guys remember, but this is the shared sticker. They didn't have the convention. So if you were able to buy it online, you could have actually got the, the convention sticker, which would value this more because any target in America got this only the people that went to the convention got the convention sticker. So that raises the value of it more. There's a difference between the shared exclusive sticker and the actual con sticker that makes it more rare. And so going into the store, I didn't know that, uh, bought a bunch of them. And then later people in the comments were telling me like, yo, you should look at eBay, like st maybe stay out of those stores because you know, the, obviously those stores have to make a living. I'm not saying don't go to, to comic book stores and stuff like that. Those places are great. I mean, a lot of them are mom and pop shops and they rely on, on collectors to go in there and buy stuff for them to stay open and for them to, to stay running. So I'm not saying don't go in there. I mean, if you're looking for, for vaulted stuff that, that you can't get anywhere else, then I would recommend looking in there. If you're looking for a, a, a con exclusive, go in there, you'll find it. If you're just buying common pops, I would recommend eBay or there's a good website, seven bucks a pop. They sell a lot of them for really cheap, but I would just say, make sure you compare prices. Don't a lot of people on Amazon raise the price a lot. I would say from what I've learned, eBay is definitely one of the best places. If the pop shows up and it's one, not what you ordered or two, it's damaged and they, and they didn't tell you that it was damaged. You bought it. You literally, you can get your money back. Uh, eBay does buyer protection. So it's really a, a great place. I would say also Macari. That's where I sell, uh, the ones that I get from the mystery box, but I think eBay has a wider selection. So just compare it, compare prices, look around, um, and just know what you're buying, learn about the stickers, whether it's a chase or not, you know, learn about that stuff. And the number three thing is price gouging. So I uploaded the video yesterday talking about the, the, the Futura C3PO and some people were hitting me up on Instagram and, and Twitter DMS. And I think I had like three or four people hit me up and was like, yo, this website's selling it. But, and even Linda was like, oh, yo, you can pre-order the Stormtrooper one from uh, big Apple collectibles or something like that. And they were selling a pre-order for $34. And, uh, that's like double, they're doubling the price because they are assuming that people are going to go out and buy them because there are people that go out there and literally will go to target and buy eight of them just in hopes of reselling them for double the price. So be careful of people price gouging stuff. The, the unfortunate thing about collecting, when will it drop? It's so confusing, especially with Target. When will that pop be available in the store? How will you know that it's gonna be there? I use a website called popfinder.com, but it's not always 100% accurate. Uh, so you really just have to get lucky. You go in there and you ask them, unless it's the actual date that it drops. And if, if it's like TargetCon, they don't even know what TargetCon is. If you're not trying to deal with that, then you can buy one of them for double the price off someone that went out and bought them all. Um, but I would recommend avoiding that. Obviously there's some that are never gonna be put back on the shelves and you won't be able to buy them again. So maybe that's the only option if you missed it is to buy it for double the price. That's just the unfortunate thing. Those would be my tips. Um, I think trading is another good way of getting stuff that you want. You know, I got that Obi one for an, another thing that I opened up in a mystery box. Always people are going to be scamming. Uh, so you do have to watch out for that. Now let's talk about mystery boxes. I've had a couple people ask me about mystery boxes. Where do I find them? Uh, which ones are the best ones? I'm literally just now getting into doing mystery boxes. Um, I don't know what the best ones are. I actually, from me, from me uploading a couple pop Funko videos, I started getting recommended other channels doing pop Funko stuff. And I started watching other people, Pop Savage, Top Pops, Beard of Pop, Je Jetta Patrol. There's another guy that always does mystery boxes unboxings, but he also buys like Amazon liquidations. He does like a whole lot of reselling stuff. And then uh, there's a couple other, but yeah, I started watching these people do mystery boxes and that's where I learned like what mystery boxes to buy. I was like, well, 
Child's Collectibles, a lot of them do that one. Toy USA, a lot of them do that one. I think M3 Toys, Boom Loot. Uh, I th wanna say that Seven Bucks a Pop does them. Uh, Shmi, I think it's called Shmi World. But there's a lot of mystery box places. Um, and I would recommend guaranteed value. You know, go for the ones that are guaranteed value. If you like to gamble and you wanna roll the dice on one of them, uh, that's not guaranteed value that that's on you, but I like to do guaranteed value to me to me That just seems like the smarter way to collect you get to one It's fun to open up mystery boxes Two, you get to add stuff to your collection three You potentially get the money that you spent back on that mystery box now Obviously if you buy an expensive mystery box and you get an expensive hit that you want to keep then that's gonna be an expensive mystery box My last thing about collecting pop Funkos is I've learned very quickly that the pop funko community is is actually really cool there's a lot of nice people in this community a lot of helping people uh literally just from me posting on instagram a couple times and twitter a couple times i've had numerous people reach out and and try to help me locate different pops in their area and they say they'll be on the lookout if they see anything uh that that i'm collecting uh meeting people at at stores we went to target con and just the people that we met there were cool from that we joined a facebook group of a bunch of other people that collect so it's a really cool community a lot of nice people in it so i do enjoy that pretty much every point that i have i do this to have a hobby and i do this to 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 have the memories it's weird it's weird to me to have a hobby that's not playing video games because i i, I was once a professional gamer that would just spend all day playing video games like the past 10 years i just had no other hobby people would ask me what do you what do you do besides play video games nothing I, I i would literally say i do i do nothing i could chill now i can say like i collect pop funkos um and yeah we, i mean me and linda like i said we already have a lot of memories a lot of funny moments different people that we've met uh stories behind different pops that we've bought that, that's that's why we do it for the fun of it i hope you guys enjoyed this video like i said if you have any questions leave them down in the comments uh hopefully we can get i have some other mystery boxes coming in the mail so mystery box video will be coming soon uh, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys are staying safe during all these times. And uh, like I said, subscribe and subscribe. Click the like button. I will see you guys in the next video.